Hi, I'm Chin Lu. And I'm Sal. And this is Our Next Make. We were recently contacted by a friend from Vaso System to see if we could help with an event they were planning to celebrate the winners from the NASA Space Apps Challenge. And since we love to share our passion for making with others, we of course said yes. Now we knew we wanted the students to make something, but we wanted to make sure that it would both help them remember their achievement as well as their time spent visiting the Dassault headquarters in Boston. We thought about something that they could use to bring home and decorate their rooms or their offices, but we really wanted it to be fun. So we designed a creative display with some sort of gaming element. After a bit of brainstorming, we agreed on something that we think perfectly matches our requirements. Here's what we came up with. A custom design shut the box game. At first glance, it looks similar to other shut the box designs, but we added a special touch. We used the X-Design app in our SOLIDWORKS for Makers license to design a version that includes laser etched acrylic and LEDs. And we put a bunch of thought into the design to ensure it could be easily assembled with minimal tools and effort. Let's head into the shop to get started. Before you start any project, please take the time to understand how to safely use your tools and be sure to protect yourself from injury. Keep your loose clothing and long hair away from your power tools. When appropriate, wear hearing protection or a dust mask, and most importantly, always wear safety glasses. I started building by breaking down the material into more manageable pieces at the miter saw. Then I took the three quarter inch stock over to the table saw to resaw it into half inch. Instead of running the board immediately through with my bandsaw, I like to start by making partial cuts using a thin curved blade in the table saw, and then cut the remaining material at the bandsaw. I find that this makes cuts at the bandsaw much easier, and that the thin curved saw blade doesn't waste that much more material. In both cases, I set up a feather board to keep the stock tight to the fence. A few passes through the planer cleans up the cuts and gets the boards down to the exact thickness. Now I can head back over to the table saw to cut the sides of the box to length. I set up a simple stop block on my miter gauge so I can cut identical pieces. Now let's take a look at the detail on the front of the box. There are two vertical grooves that receive the side walls and a horizontal groove that receives the acrylic floor panel. I could have made these cuts at the table saw and router table, but since I have to make 10 sets of these boxes and each piece has a different level of intricacy, I decided to turn to my CNC. I used a scrap piece of plywood to create a jig that lets me establish a repeatable zero, and I used a few screw-in-place hold downs to keep the boards tight to the table. Using this approach, I could dial in the fit and then rerun the program to quickly cut all 10 pieces. I used the CNC in the same way to cut the details on all the other pieces as well. Here I'm cutting the grooves in the pin support wall. This sidewall piece shows just how intricate some of the cuts are, but the CNC machine made quick work of them. Of course, as you'd expect from a router, it left rounded inside corners. Instead of squaring them up with a chisel, I rounded over the remaining piece to fit using my palm router. This has a nice side benefit of making the piece nicer to the touch. If we look back at the X-Design model again, we can see that the floor under the pins sits in a groove along its perimeter. To make this part fit, I have to cut a rabbit on all four of its sides. I'm using my dado stack to do this, but if you either don't have a dado set, or if your saw's arbor is designed to prevent their usage, you can cut these using several passes with your table saw blade. I set up a sacrificial fence to cut the rabbits on the long side, and use my mutter gauge with a stop block to cut the short sides. With the main pieces of the box complete, I turn my attention to making the pins, all 90 of them. I start by ripping 3 quarter inch boards into half inch strips. As you can see, these cuts were made before I installed my splitter, so I took extra care when making them and used a long, sturdy push stick to complete the cut. If you'd like to see how I installed the splitter, be sure to check out our table saw upgrade video. To cut the pins to length, I first set my table saw fence to 3.5 inches. Then, I hold the board up against the fence and slide the fence out of the way. I then use that board's position to locate the side of my magnetic feather board. This will serve as a positive stop for each cut and ensure I safely cut identical parts. Alternatively, you could clamp a spacer block to your rip fence. Whatever technique you use though, make sure you don't have the work piece in contact with the rip fence when you're cross-cutting with the miter gauge. Now I can start preparing the pins for Chin Lu to laser engrave them. I gather nine pins into a group, line them up along a straight edge, and then use blue painter's tape to hold them together. This allows Chin Lu to engrave the entire set all at once. To reduce the time on the laser cutter, since there are so many sets to engrave, I tried a time saver technique. If I had solid numbers, the engraving process would require the laser to burn the wood a row at a time like an inkjet printer. So I turned the numbers into vector outlines and performed a light profile cut. I set the power very low and the speed very high so that the laser line does not cut through the wooden pins. For this project, the shallow cut lines work well and looks great. Now that the pins have their numbers, 
I can take them over to the drill press and start drilling their pivot holes. As it's critical that I get all of the holes in the same location, I set up a jig with some scrap wood and a few clamps. Okay, that's more than a few. And seeing this setup reminds me that it's time for me to build a drill press table. But what's important here is that I continue to place the pieces on the drill press the same way. If you look closely, you can see that I wrote a number sign on the table to remind me which direction I should have the number facing to get consistent results. For the floor of the box, we thought that it would be cool to have something interesting to look at while you play and when it's on display. It could behave like a framed illuminated picture. We came up with the idea of engraving a space-inspired scene on clear acrylic and piping light through it to accentuate the design. I also ordered the numbers in reverse as to count down from 9 just like you would if you were to blast off. To keep the design clean, I flipped the image and engraved the bottom side of the acrylic. To finish off on the laser, I nested and cut out the necessary LED backer boards with some engraved reference lines for proper alignment of the LEDs. I also cut out a set of 8 inch plates that will be used to hold the USB cord securely in the strain relief channel. I used the LED backer board to measure up to the closest segment of the LED so that when I cut the strip, I will have connector pads to solder to. With a wire stripper, I find the hole that is slightly smaller than the diameter of the cable. I then score and cut the cable sleeve about an inch from the end by clamping down and rotating the tool. I'm careful to not cut deep enough to damage the wires under the sleeve. Once scored and mostly cut, I use a set of needle nose pliers to pull the sleeve off. Then I trim back the sheath and carefully strip about an eighth inch of the wires within the cable. I pinched and twirled the bare wire tips to make a tight and clean bundle. I first get some solder on the bare wire tips by heating the metal and melting the solder from above. This way the solder melts onto the wire instead. Now I heat the contact pads on the LED strip before melting a bead of solder on it. Then I bring the black wire to the ground and with a bit of heat on either the wire or the pad, the two will fuse. I do the same for the red wire to the contact pad for the positive power. Once secure, I tug gently to make sure that the connection is sound and plug it in to test the connection. While Chin Lu soldered, I added heat shrink tubes to cover the exposed wires. To apply heat, you can either use a heat gun or a lighter as I'm doing here. The key is to keep the heat moving so you don't overheat any particular area. You should be especially careful to not overheat the LEDs or melt their adhesive backing. The last part we had to make was the steel rod that supports the pins. I simply marked an eighth inch steel rod to length and cut it with my cable cutters. Before we get these pieces to the students for them to assemble, Sal tested the dry fit of all the pieces and numbered them. Then I carefully wipe on a couple of coats of butcher block oil, making sure not to get any oil on the surfaces that will need to be glued. The oil worked well to bring out the subtle beauty of the maple wood. To make final preparations for the event, we gathered all of the pieces into individual kits and got them ready to take to the 3D Experience Lab. On the day of the event, we had the awesome privilege of meeting the winners of the NASA Space Apps Challenge, a group of extremely bright students from Wichita State University. We showed them how the game was designed in X-Design, and then with the help of our good friend Rachel, we walked them through the steps to assemble the games. I think they had a blast, and particularly loved seeing the games light up. It was a wonderful time, and the students were extremely appreciative of our effort, which made the event that much more special to us. The assembly of the game is fairly straightforward, but we do have to follow a particular order. First, we attach the LED strip to its backer board using the self-adhesive backing. Then, we screw the LED assembly to the center wall. This piece can then be glued to one of the side pieces. We go lightly with the glue so we can avoid any squeeze out. Now we can assemble the pins. First we insert the steel rod and then alternate placing washers and pins. It's important here to make sure that the pins are oriented in the correct direction and are in the correct numeric order. It's also important to make sure that the acrylic panel is oriented correctly. So we slide it into the grooves now while we can still see everything clearly. To assemble the other side piece, we first add a bit of glue to its recess and then take our time to first align the steel rod and then the middle wall. Now we finish up assembling the front of the box and trap in the acrylic by once again adding a bit of glue and then attach with a few 23 gauge pin nails. We use those just as a bit of insurance since we're gluing end grain and we angle the pins to give a bit more holding power. Flipping the box over, we can now insert the piece that acts as a floor underneath the pins and both hides the LEDs as well as secures their cable. We glue on the back of the box just as we did the front and secure again with pin nails. The last step is to insert the USB cable into the channel and screw on the retainer. The shape of this channel is important. It acts as a strain relief and ensures that any force that's applied to the cable is transferred to the box and not to the solder joint on the LED strip. In other words, if the game were plugged into a USB port and the cable was yanked, it would more likely pull the USB cable out of the outlet than it would pull the LEDs out of the game. Now let's see what the game looks like plugged in. That's awesome. I just love the look of edge lit engraved acrylic.
This was a great project. I agree. The simple lines and the beautiful maple make this an elegant design. Yeah, and I love how the acrylic came out. I love that it matches the NASA space theme and the subtle detail of reversing the numbers to mimic a countdown, I think was a really nice touch. Yeah, and we got to reduce the mass production time quite a bit by redesigning some of our elements. Yeah, and we absolutely love sharing our passion to make things with the Wichita State students. They were a great group. We had a ton of fun. And I think we might have even inspired them a little bit. And if this project inspired you to do your own custom game or any other creation, please let us know in the comments. Until then, we'll see you on our next make.